This video is one in a series produced by the TAS Farming Futures Project. Through this project, we've been working with a range of industries and supporting farmers to understand greenhouse gas emissions, how to reduce them, and at the same time, increase farm efficiency. Now, nitrogen is a really key component in the growth of pastures and in livestock production. It comes into pastures in a variety of different ways, through fertiliser, through legumes, mineralisation of organic matter, small amounts of, you know, deposited in rain or coming from free-living bacteria. But in pastures, the efficiency of that nitrogen use tends to be quite low compared to in cropping because of the daily urination that happens on them. So there's large amounts of urine in concentrated form in the pastures represents every day an opportunity for the loss of nitrogen. So there are of course a range of different things that farmers can do to improve the efficiency and to get better production and have less money wasted. Of particular note about the nitrogen losses is that some of it can be lost as nitrous oxide, which is a very powerful greenhouse gas, around 300 times more powerful than carbon dioxide. So Andrew Bailey here from the Tasmanian Institute of Agriculture can tell us about the nitrogen or protein needs of livestock. Go ahead, Andrew. Most of that protein that an animal needs, it will be dependent on its physiological state. So mm -hmm. young animals that are actively growing their lots, uh, adult animals that uh, meet their, their mature body weight mm -hmm. will need just a basal amount. Okay. The exception, of course, is if they're pregnant or lactating, where, again, they're trying to feed an animal that's attached to them. Okay. So, um, like a, a dry um, adult animal, what's the sort of crude protein optimum levels? To meet that basal level, in, in practical terms, not yep. in terms of scientifically, it's about 12%, and that will then rise to probably about 18% for a young animal like a, a lamb that's just been weaned and is now starting to eat for itself and try and grow yep. out rapidly. Mm, okay. One of the key things that we want to understand today is how the nitrogen levels change and how grazing management can influence that. As a plant grows, particularly a ryegrass plant, what we're looking at is the leaf appearance. So ryegrass is a three-leaf plant and what we're trying to achieve here is to make sure that the plant can restore its energy reserves and balances out its nutrient levels. One of the key ones of them is nitrogen. Young tissue will be higher in nitrogen than it will be in older tissue. That might suggest a good thing, however often in dairy pastures or livestock pastures nitrogen is too high at that young leaf stage. So we want to target our grazing to two to three leaf stage. This gives the best balance between nitrogen and carbohydrate for the ruminant to function. One of the other aspects that we need to understand is nitrogen levels following uh, fertilising. The key recommendations here is to try to fertilise immediately after grazing and at least allow two leaf uh, regrowth stages before we graze that pasture. Avoid high levels of nitrate which can affect animal performance. So if you're buying the nitrogen going onto pastures and it's not turning into end product like uh, meat and milk, then it's a waste of money and potentially a pollutant as well. So Luke Taylor here can tell us about how to use nitrogen fertilizers most efficiently on pastures. Okay, so uh, you can probably think of it as the 4R principle, mm -hmm. about getting the right fertilizer, the right type of fertilizer on the right rate, yep. the right amount and the right area. And so if you think about the, the right time to put it on, um, basically, if you think about it, you want to put it on when you're going to get a response. So yeah, sure. in the warmer months, that's when you're going to get a response from the nitrogen. As you start getting into winter, then uh, the response is going to be less. But there's also the moisture as well. If it's warm and dry, then... Yes, that's right. Exactly. So it's in the, in going on that also in the summer, mm -hmm. the peak of summer, when it's, you know, uh, you've got days of 25 degrees and above for extended periods, then the uh, grass is going to slow down. And it's not going to be utilised in nitrogen. And then in terms of the right place, well, you want to put it on where you're going to get a response. So you've got to think about your base fertility. You know, have you, you know, is your phosphorus levels okay? Your potassium levels yep. okay? Are you going to get the biggest bang for your buck? So, mm. um, and in terms of the right place, you don't want to put it on where it's waterlogged. Uh, yep. You don't want to put it on areas where you know you've got salinity. You don't want to put it on areas that, that are too dry. So sure. you've got to, yeah. and so look, what about the right amount? Well, um, in the peak of spring, uh, pastures use a kilogram of nitrogen per day. And uh, when you do go put your mm. nitrogen out, you want to look at putting on anywhere from, uh, let's say the economical amount is anywhere from 25 kilograms of N 
uh, up to uh, 40 kilograms of NRE okay. 50, but you don't want to extend uh, or go over 50 kilograms per, um, per hectare of nitrogen. Now the nitrogen in feed flows through ruminant livestock in different ways. There's three main parts of the protein there. There's the non-protein nitrogen, um, which is basically nitrates and ammonium in the feed. Um, there's also the rumen degradable protein, which breaks down in the rumen, and then the bypass, root, uh, bypass protein, which can go straight through into the hindgut and get used straight away. Um, usually the bypass protein is a pretty small um, component of the total amount. So, um, and really dry feed like this and over this side, uh, there'll be very low amounts of protein and that slows down the digestion of fiber in the rumen and so it slows down you know, the weight gain uh, and also produces more methane energy loss and with a greener lusher feed like this uh, lucin here the protein levels are going to be higher as this is pretty stalky and flowering it's not likely to be too high at the moment probably pretty good but on a, a more of a winter early spring very lush green pasture the protein levels could be quite high. A lot of it breaks down in the rumen and ammonia leaks through into the bloodstream, um, which is, you know, toxic. So it can really slow down live weight gain as the animals use energy to detoxify their blood instead of to grow. And that uh, can also lead to much higher levels of nitrogen being urinated out onto the pastures and cause nitrous oxide emissions to be higher than would otherwise be if they're on a moderate or optimum level of protein in their diet. Nitrogen loss as gas occurs fastest in warm, wet soil conditions, so careful management of summer irrigation is important. How will we determine uh, how often to irrigate and, and how much uh, we are, we're applying in one application is usually uh, determining the amount of evaporation and transpiration between now and the last uh, irrigation and we we uh, try to replace all that plus a certain amount, uh, perhaps at one mil per day for, for extra um, grass usage. Um, with our nitrogen applications we try to time them um, up to four days before grazing with uh, putting uh, urea on and with the easy end which we're putting on through the centre pivot uh, we apply that directly after grazing which um, seems to have very good uptake from the plant and what we've seen, not too much uh, leaching. I'm here with Peter Sattler, and he's got quite a lot of lotus growing in some of these back paddocks around here. And the value of this is in the condensed tannins within the foliage. And inside the rumen, the tannins bind onto some of the rumen degradable protein and turn it into bypass protein, which can improve ovulation rates, milk production, live weight gain, or wool growth. Um, which is a great benefit, but also it partitions some of the nitrogen coming out the back of the animals, but more of it into dung, less into urine, so you've got better slow release nitrogen in the paddock and less nitrous oxide emissions as well. Right. Yeah. Seems environmental advantage. <laughs> and animal production as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, are you planning on cutting this for hay, or how are you going to uh, use this? this? Not this, not this paddock um, this year, but it's. Uh, that's a bit of a research thing that I'm trying to do to try to work out how to how to best utilise it. I am aware that people um, do cut it for hay. I recall my father, as a young man and a young boy, he he used to talk about tray foil as a as a, a feed and cutting it for mm -hmm. hay. Mm -hmm. So to sum up, where practical, try to match the protein in feed to animal requirements. Graze at the optimum leaf stage for a good balance between protein and energy. If you're not depending on the legumes for nitrogen in the pasture, use the 4Rs for most efficient nitrogen fertiliser use. If irrigating, avoid saturating the soil, and in a temperate, high nitrogen environment, feeds with tannins in them can be used to achieve better protein utilisation. These approaches can improve the nitrogen efficiency in your farm, and reduce greenhouse gas emissions as well as increase animal and pasture performance.